Alright, continuing from where we left off, we have finished modeling the lamp and now we want to prepare it for rigging. So uh, before I do that, I want to check and make sure that my uh, parent and child relationships is correct for this 3D model. So I'm going to open up the outliner. Okay, and I believe I have not parented the bulb to the lamp shade yet. And I also need to make sure that all the names have been named correctly. So right now I don't need the curves anymore. I can select the curves and then I can delete them. And I want to parent the light bulb and I'm going to call this bulb. And then this is the lamp shade, so I'm going to call it lamp shade. So I'm going to parent the light bulb to the lamp shade. So to do that in the outliner, just uh, middle mouse click and drag over the lamp shade and release. Okay, so now the lamp shade is the parent of the light bulb. So I want this little component here, this socket here, to be the parent of the of the lamp shade. So click on the lamp shade, middle mouse click and drag, and then drop it over the uh, cylindrical socket. So right now the cylindrical socket is the parent of this uh, whole hierarchy. And now I just want to make this the parent of this hierarchy, which is this uh, cylindrical uh, socket here. So I'm going to again select this hierarchy, middle mouse click and drag and drop it onto the hierarchy. Or rather drop drop it into this uh, cylinder socket to make it the parent. Okay, so now I have the hierarchy here, here, here and here as shown here in the outliner. So if you can click on these uh, plus boxes, it will show you the uh, children of the object. Okay, so the base is the parent of this uh, this little base socket here. Okay, so you don't have to parent this continuously downwards because uh, later we're going to use joints to drive them. Okay, so now, the next step we want to do is to ensure that the scale is frozen. Okay, right now you can see the uh, lamp shade uh, scale is a bit off. So if you were to rig with this type of scaling, it's going to cause a lot of problems later on. So uh, in order to ensure that all the scale has been frozen, we're going to select all the geometry, including the uh, nerve surfaces, and then we're going to go to Modify and Freeze Transformations. Okay, so I'm just click on the lampshade to make sure that everything is set to 1. Okay, so I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is I want to put all these surfaces and mesh objects into its own layer. So I'm going to create a new channel, a uh, new layer, okay, in the uh, channel layer editor. Double click on the name layer and I'm going to call it geometry. You can call it lamp if you want or lamp meshes if you want and hit save. And then I'm going to grab all the uh, surfaces object, right mouse click on the layer itself and choose the option add selected objects. And then we can actually turn it visible or invisible by clicking on this V and in this empty button here when you click on it you can change it to template okay so when you're in template mode right you you can't really select and edit it okay and including this uh, I guess this is restricted okay I'm not not exactly sure what the R stands for so right now you can see it in shaded mode but you can't uh, select and edit it so you can have to check, you have to click on it until it's an empty box before you can select and edit it again. So I'm going to put it into template mode. Okay, so I guess in template mode, you, it is transparent and you can see through it. So when I'm in template mode, I'm going to start to create my joints. Okay, so if you have watched the primer on uh, rigging, the short primer video that I've done before this, you will have a pretty rough idea on how the whole um, join system work. So I'm going to start by creating uh, my first join system which is going to start from this section all the way down to the foot area. So since we're going to animate this rig, okay, I'm going to call this the, uh, the belly section and then down to the knee and for some of you your knee might be pointing forward so the way which I modeled my lamp, my lamp's knee is pointing backwards. Uh, it will still be the same, you can still animate the, uh, the object this way but you have to make sure that before you draw your bones that your lamp 
okay it's lined up lined up perfectly in the center of the origin okay so uh, always draw your joints in the orthographic view at the, at the orthographic side view uh, try not to draw your bones in the perspective view okay otherwise you will not be uh, perfectly lined up so to create your joints you go to skeleton and then click on join tool and then click start from the center here okay click once click twice and then the first join will be created okay I'm gonna click another time to create another join and then finally I'm gonna click one more joint right here and when you hit enter you would have created your first join system and in the outliner you can open up the hierarchy you can see each of this joint from join 1 to join 4 has a parent-child relationship okay so we're gonna take the opportunity to rename them so that we will know uh, uh, what joint they are. So for the first joint, I'm going to call this the uh, pelvis joint underscore JNT which stands for joint and then the second joint I'm going to call it the uh, knee joint and then the third joint I'm going to call it the ankle joint and then the last joint I'm going to call it the foot joint okay so our first system uh, of joints is created and properly named. Next, we're going to create a secondary a joint system that starts from, again, this area all the way to the top. Okay, so you can think of this uh, leg as a human structure. So this section, you can think of it as the hip of the human. And then uh, we're going to go up the spine and then the neck and then the head. So And that is the name that we're going to assign our joints. So, we're, I'm going to click on skeleton join two again and when you draw make sure you do not uh, click over this joint otherwise it will be connected okay, to this joint so I'm gonna click a joint slightly away from the original joint system and then start to draw my joint okay this joint here and I'm just gonna click it so that the joint is right in the middle of the mesh then I'm going to click one more joint here and then finally another joint sticking out from the light bulb itself. So press enter to finish the creation of the joint system. So again I'm going to open up all the joints. Okay so we got one joint here and it travels all the way up to the end and I'm going to name them accordingly. So for this one I'm going to call it the belly joint. And the second one, I'm going to call it the spine joint. And then the third one, I'm going to call it the neck joint. And then this one, I'm going to call it the head joint. And then the last one, I'm call it the nose joint. Okay, you just you can give it any name that is appropriate. Right, so right now i got two uh, joint system. Uh, while the, the bones are in this position, you can readjust them to make sure that they fit. Now, for this uh, joint in particular, we want to make the, jo uh, the belly joint the child of the pelvis joint. So you can select the belly joint, holding down the shift and selecting the pelvis joint and press P. Okay. And the uh, next thing I want to do is I want to shift this joint until it uh, lines up perfectly with this joint here. You can manually do that, or you can hold down to uh, V, right, and then middle mouse click and drag it until it snaps into place. But you will notice that the top uh, joint system will become slightly offset. So you can actually select this joint and manually move it until it lines up again. So you want to check in perspective view to make sure that all the joints, okay, for, for both the top and bottom joint system is lined up within the 3D mesh. So once we have done this process, you want to start to do the uh, IK joint assignment. Okay, you want to create an IK joint. Because like I said earlier, right now this is only an FK joint where everything is posed uh, just using rotation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a IK joint system. So you need to go to skeleton and create use the IK handle tool. 
So make sure in the option box selection, okay, that you are creating a single chain solver. You want to select the pelvis bone first. All right, you can verify by looking in your uh, outliner and then click on the ankle joint. So once you have done that, a new object called the IK handle will have been created and by default it is now selected. If you press W to go to move, you'll be able to move the joint okay, by using the inverse kinematics or IK. All right, so let me undo that. So right now I'm going to create a similar IK joint for the neck. Okay, for the neck joint. So to do that, first I go to skeleton, IK handle 2. Okay, I want to select the base joint. So now both the pelvis and belly joint are lined up together. So it's very, very difficult to select either one of them. So that's where the outliner is very, very useful. So I want the IK system to start from the belly joint. Okay, so I'm going to click on skeleton, IK handle 2 again, and click on belly joint. And then I'm going to click on the neck joint. Okay, just move my uh, cursor over neck joint and then click on it. So once you have done that, you have created another IK handle, which will actually pose, okay, the upper part of the, uh, the entire rig here. So I'm going to rename the IK handles accordingly. So IK handle 1, I'm going to call it ankle underscore IK. And then IK handle 2, I'm going to call it neck underscore IK. All right. So I can now select all my bone system and its bone objects and throw it in a separate layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call these joints. Give it a bright green color and click save. I'm going to go to the outliner, hold down the shift and select all the bones and joints. Right mouse click over the joint layer and then add selected objects. So now I have the option of turning them on or off. Okay. At this stage, we want to create something called controllers. Now, when you are doing animation, you don't usually select the IK to animate them. So you attach them or you constrain them to other objects like curve, curve objects which are easily selectable. And curves by themselves are not usually renderable. So uh, you, they are very, very suitable objects for, uh, contro for acting as controllers. And furthermore, if you are just animating the uh, curve objects itself, you have uh, less information to uh, worry about. Okay. So the first thing I want to create is to create the curve. So NURPS primitives. I'm going to create a NURPS circle. But for um, Maya version 2015, okay, I have to create them in the top view. Okay, if you are creating in uh, older versions of Maya, or you can go to the option box uh, in the uh, NURPS primitive circle. I think you can have the option of creating a fixed uh, fixed circle and in my option box there are number there are 16 sections for the curve circle that I'm creating so I'm gonna create and then I'm gonna drag to create the circle so I'm gonna go to the perspective view and I'm gonna modify this uh, circle so that uh, it is more visible and easier to select so I'm gonna go to my top view again Right mouse click over the circle, go to the control vertex and select alternate points. And then I'm going to scale it down. So I got this interesting shape. So I'm going to bring this controller. I need to go to object mode first. Bring this controller until I'm going to go to my right view until it intersects the uh, IK handle tool. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this curve, Shift D, oh sorry, Control D to duplicate. And then I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, inside the option box, minus 90 degrees in the Z axis. And I'm just going to scale this curve down a little bit. 
I'm going to shift D, control D, I beg your pardon, to duplicate another curve. And then I'm going to move it up all the way here. You can also use uh, V and middle mouse click and drag to snap it into place. Okay. Okay, you can inspect the position of the curves. Okay, now I want to create a master curve which is going to be used for uh, controlling or moving the entire rig. So I'm going to create a NURBS primitive circle again. But this time I'm going to reduce it to Okay, going to top view. Now you don't have to follow the uh, exact numbers that I'm giving here. Okay, so you can create a unique shape for yourself. So I'm just gonna grab four of these points. Okay, let me just go to edit point again. Sorry, control vertex. Okay, I'm having problems selecting this. I'm actually selecting the bones, so let me just hide the bones. Two, three, four. Instead of selecting alternate, I'm just selecting four of these points until I create a point like this. So with these unique shapes of the controllers, it's easier to uh, know which is which when you are moving specific portions uh, of the uh, joint system. So why are we creating all these joints? Or rather, why are we creating all these curves? These curves, right, will be act as control handles. Okay, I'm just going to rotate this slightly. So these are handles in a way which you can grab and manipulate the entire bone structure. So before I constrain them, I need to select all of them. Okay, and I need to reset uh, its transformations. Okay, let me undo that. I want to reset only the scale, but not the translation. Okay, so re uh, reset transform. Oops, the rotation is also off. Let me just. Okay. Uh, I beg your pardon, I'm not supposed to be resetting, I want to freeze the transformations. So go to freeze transformation and then freeze transform. Okay, that was what I was trying to do, not resetting them. That's why they're all jumping back to the origin. Okay, so now I'm going to name them accordingly. So this curve, I'm going to call it master controller. Okay, and then this curve, I'm going to call it the ankle controller then this curve I'm gonna call it the pelvis controller and then finally this one I'm gonna call it the neck controller so I'm gonna select all these controllers Okay, four of them in total. I'm going to create a new layer just for them. Call it controllers. Give it a bright yellow color. Save. Right mouse click, add selected objects. So right now you see the curves itself turn bright yellow because uh, I've assigned a color to them. So I'm now going to unhide my joints. And I'm going to start to assign them constraints. So now, the first constraint I want to assign is to assign a point constraint for the IK handle. The ankle, for the ankle IK handle, I want it to be constrained to this ankle controller. So constraints, if you watch my primer video, as I've explained, uh, assignment work in such a way. You must always select the master first before you select the slave. So in this case, the slave is the ankle IK. So the master is the ankle controller. So 
you can do this very easily in the outliner or you can if you can see the uh, objects itself in the perspective window you can also do that so I'm going to hide the geometry for the time being so that it's easier to see so this is the IK handle represented by this very faint uh, cross or rather three, three uh, line object here so again select the master first then select the slave okay so I'm going to select uh, go to constraint I'm going to choose a point constraint Okay, so I click on point constraint. Um, I need to do the section first. So master, holding down the shift, select the slave. Then go to constraint point. Okay, so now if I were to select the, uh, the ankle controller now, and if I move it around, you notice that now it actually manipulates the uh, IK handle. And since it's a point constraint, if I rotate the handle, nothing happens. Okay, because I'm not affecting uh, any rotation values of anything yet. So for the IK handle, the only thing which I want to uh, affect is the position. That's why point is used. Now, I want to affect the orientation of this joint, okay, which is the, the ankle joint. Alright, so that I can point the foot up and down like so. So I'm going to use another constraint called an orientation constraint. So, so that when I rotate this, okay, the orientation of this controller, the ankle controller, is going to match the orientation of the bone. So again, master, and then holding down the shift and select the child. Sorry, master and slave, which is this joint. And then I'm going to go to Constraint, Orient, and make sure that the Maintain Offset is there, and then Add. So now, when I select this and turn on Rotate, you can see that the, the joint is following the orientation of this controller. So we've done the Constraint for the Ankle Controller. Now let's move on to the uh, Pelvis Controller. So I'm going to select the pelvis joint, this is going to be the slave of this uh, of this uh, pelvis con uh, controller here. So this is the master, so I'm going to select the master, holding down the shift, and then select the pelvis joint. Okay, so select this, and then select the pelvis joint. And then go to constraint, and then hit on point. Okay, let me undo that because the offset, I think the offset is off. Let me check on the constraint. Okay, the maintain offset is on. Okay, let me try that again. Parent, and then master. Okay, master, holding the shift to slave. Okay, pelvis joint, and then I'm going to constraint and hit point. Okay, so now that works. So you have to be very careful and make sure you select the con uh, correct joint. So now, if I select this controller and I move it, you can see now it follows where the joint is going. Okay, see that? And if I want the rotation to follow, but in this case, I don't think I need to assign any rotation because later, I'm going to do a parent-child relationship between this controller and this controller to do that. So we just need to do a point constraint for the pelvis uh, for this controller for the time being. So if you have problems selecting the pelvis joint, okay, so just make sure that the only the joint is selected and not the entire hierarchy. Like otherwise you'll see that weird offset problem that happens to me. Okay, so now let's do the uh, constraint uh, for the IK handle here to this uh, neck controller so again master and then holding down the shift 
to select the slave then go to constraint and then we are going to create a point constraint and so that when I move this Okay, the joint follows. Okay, and I would really prefer the orientation of the joint follows where the cause the controller is is uh, rotated at. So I'm going to make a orientation controller to this joint. So select this master first, holding down the shift and select the joint that you want the orientation to be constrained to then go to constraint and choose orient okay so that now when I select this and move you can see it is always pointing forward now it is not pointing in the weird direction and only when I rotate this then the joint will rotate okay so my basic joint system is done but I still need one more step notice that the top controller right is not following where the bottom controller is doing so normally when you move your hip down okay this controller should follow so we should use a parent and child constraint okay for this uh, actually you don't really have to do that you can actually use a parent child relationship so I'm gonna select this controller holding down the shift and select this controller and then press P so now when I move this joint you can see the top it is following uh, the hip controller now and this bottom part is controlling the the foot joint okay and what about this master joint so this master will en enable the entire hierarchy to be moving along so you need this to be the master or not really the master the parent of all these controllers so very simply you just select since this one is already a uh, master of this one, I'm going to select this one, holding down the shift to select this controller, and finally select the master last, and then press P. So that when I select this master controller, the entire rig moves. So if you're able to get everything to move this far, you already basically done your rigging. Okay, so the next step is to attach the uh, mesh components to the entire uh, hierarchy the joint hierarchy okay or the entire joint rig that we have done so now we have to unhide the geometry of the lamp and then I'm gonna press uh, this button until it is empty so that I can edit these uh, components okay so right now I want to use another type of constraint called a parent constraint so that the uh, the mesh parts itself is actually parent constraint to the bones so I'm going to go to the right view and I'm going to start from the top all the way to the bottom so I know that this system here this uh, parent child system here this is the this is the main parent so I want it to be constrained to this joint, the neck joint bone. So again, for uh, for constraints to work, you need to select the master first. So I'm going to select the bone, the master. Then holding down the shift and select the entire hierarchy here. Then I'm going to use constraint, parent constraint. I'm going to make sure that maintain offset is on and I'm going to hit apply. Okay. So now if I were to select the neck controller and rotate okay the lamp head should follow okay so I'm gonna move down the entire hierarchy and I'm gonna attach uh, constraint using parent constraint to this joint so I'm gonna select the bone first because the bone is the master master holding down the shift slave okay slave then go to constraint parent okay I'm gonna just move down I'm going to press, uh, select the bones again. This is the master bone and then select master and then this is the slave. And then I'm going to press G, repeat last command, which is parent constraint. So now I'm going to select the pelv. No, this is not pelvis. This is the 
this is the knee bone knee joint this is the master holding down the shift left mouse click on the hierarchy well actually I do not want this bone to be affecting this one I rather want this joint to be affecting this one so I have to be very careful to see okay actually it should be this bone so I want this bone to be the master this one holding down the shift and select the slave and then constrain parent okay and then finally I'm going to select this bone holding on the shift and select the ball socket here constrain parent and finally this base here I want it to be constrained to this bone here parent constrained to this bone here so select the base holding on the shift sorry select the master first which is the bone then select the base component then go to constraint and parent constraint so if I'm done everything correctly now all the parts should be following the entire uh, bone system okay this top part seems to work very well this section here yep is working I'm very pleased with this and then what about this one excellent and I can actually rotate this and it should still follow nicely and I can still move the entire hierarchy easily so this is how you test to make sure everything works and then I guess you are ready for animation so if you are not very sure of how I did this please go through or rewind the video and then study the steps that I have done and uh, also look at the hierarchy system that I've done here and make sure that you follow the steps correctly so essentially this is how you rig the entire uh, lamp using the skeleton uh, joint system